Queremos presentarles a eh, Tom Boschamp y Ruth Faden, dos muy conocidos bioeticistas a nivel internacional, que formaron parte del primer seminario intensivo que desarrollamos en Flaxo de manera presencial como parte de nuestra nueva maestría en bioética. So it is a pleasure to be here with Tom Boschamp. We want to ask you what was the first idea and how this theory of principles. Okay. okay, so how did the idea of the book, Principles of Biomedical Ethics, first arise? Mm -hmm. We were in the context, Jim Childers and I were in the context of teaching a course that was largely for healthcare practitioners, at least under the label bioethics, because mm -hmm. the term had just been What's invented when we start the course. So Jim and I uh, were giving these, we were doing all of what was called at that time the ethical theory lectures in the course, which was six uh, lectures, long lectures. And um, a um, psychiatrist who was on the faculty with us came to us and said, there is nothing like this in bioethics. Why don't you make your lectures into a book? So we thought about it. And we said, why not? And the psychiatrist contacted the editor of Oxford University Press in New York and proposed the idea. And within a week, he was in Washington wanting to sign the book <laughs> because he realized what the potential was. Now, he didn't see a word that we had written, not one word, but he wanted to sign the book. I, I guess it was a good thing. The second question is, what were the main changes you made in, in your book, in each edition, as we know that each edition has changes introduced? Yes, well, something that many people might not know is that every edition has had an extensive body of changes. So some people say, well, yes, but this change is very different from what you said previously, so it looks like a different theory, right? But our view is, is that it augments, explicates, deepens, and so on, the original idea of the four principles, or as I prefer to say, four groupings mm -hmm. of principles. Um, the structure has changed in some respects substantially over time, um, but I think that we've remained consistent to the original idea. In this most recent edition, we tried to deepen some chapters more than others. We continue to concentrate, as we did in the last edition, on questions of justification and method. So in particular, deepening the ethical theory. We tried to give a much better explication of the idea of human rights, devoting a large section of the book to human rights that we never had before. And under the influence of the well-known Ruth Faden and Madison Powers, we deepened the theory of justice in the chapter on um, justice, particularly to take account of problems of global justice as they've arisen over the last 10 years or so. I would say those are the major changes. So now we want to know what is your actual work? What are you doing today? What are your interests today? Well, I, I would say I'm a person who has had a troubled career because I could never settle into some one area. You know, many people, they write on, I don't know, paternalism their entire career or feminism in bioethics or, or whatever. Uh, I tend to move to a, a lot of different things. One of the things I've worked a great deal on in the last three years is animal ethics not confined entirely to research animals, but to our uses of animals of uh, many types. And this eventuated last year in a book, um, an anthology which I edited, all of original work that was um, uh, over a thousand pages long, and I think is the, the deepest and most concentrated philosophical work, because it was all done by philosophers in this book philosophical work that's ever been done on animal ethics. So from that perspective, I'm very proud of this, of this particular book. 
Um, as you know, in recent years, the last three years or so, um, some of us in what um, has been called the Hopkins Group have been working in, in the area of research ethics that's concerned with a, a framework to take account of the way in which there is an evolving course of medicine to greater collection of data, more systematic uh, organization of that data, and more um, rapid production of knowledge and better treatment in the healthcare system. Though it may be a little bit futuristic in the way in which we have constructed it, I, I do think, again, that that's uh, very important work. Finally, we want to know what you think about the students, the seminar, and Flaxo students during this week you were teaching here? Well, your course is what we would call an intensive course. I don't know if you use that, mm -hmm. that yeah. language or not. Uh, and of course, I've been doing intensive courses now for about 35 years, actually, a little bit more. And I think that the courses are with something like the same age group and range of experience that your people here are. These are not undergraduate students, they're not graduate students, these are very mature people who come back for further education and to deepen their knowledge. So I'm, I'm very used to that kind of context. Something that stands out to me with Argentinians, because that's, that's the question, is how much more expressive you are. Mm -hmm. as a, not everyone, of course, but how much, how much more expression, expressiveness there is in the discourse that occurs by contrast to, say, Americans. Americans tend to be very sober, not so expressive, just get the facts, raise the question. Here it's done with great enthusiasm and expressiveness, and I shall never forget that about Argentina. Hi, Ruth. We want to know what is your approach regarding public health ethics. The central point that uh, we have been trying to make in our work from the beginning is the close connection between the ethics of public health and social justice. So we are most concerned to defend the view that the moral foundation of public health as a political and global institution is the advancement of social justice. We want to know if your approach to public health ethics has changed and how it has changed along these years you've been working on it. I, I began in my career in public health. So I have a degree in, one of my degrees is in public health and my first job as a grown up after my PhD was in a school of public health. So for me, uh, the ethics of public health was just what I did from the beginning right, in my career. It's uh, changed very much in the past 10 years. Uh, there are many more people who are doing work in the ethics of public health. At my own institution, we have had a program in ethics and public health for 20 plus years. But uh, now it's wonderful to see how many more people are interested in the ethics of public health and population health. We have specialty journals and many, many, many young people coming up who are working in this area. We want to know what are, are the challenges, the new challenges public health ethics faces today. So I think it has changed uh, in this respect. When I first began in public health, ethics, thinking of the ethics of public health, I too spent a lot of time thinking about the tensions between public health and individual liberty. And I still think these are important issues, but over the years I became convinced that the bigger challenges and the more important issues had to do with thinking about questions of uh, disadvantage and of who benefits and who loses in public health and of the role of public health in allocating fairly the resources and the burdens of promoting the, the health of the, the population. So my own work moved more in the direction of justice, sort of first practically and then theoretically. 
And uh, what are you working on now? No surprise here. <laughs> <laughs> more, more, more justice-related considerations. So uh, right now I would say my work is primarily in two areas. One with my colleague Madison Powers. We are working on a second book on, theory of, uh, on our theory of justice what we call our twin aim theory of justice. And this uh, book will focus in particular on uh, our theory as a theory of global justice with uh, implications that are not specific to health but are also applicable and important for food, energy, and water, which we see as foundational for human well-being generally. Also, the other area that I am uh, spending a lot of time on is the continuation of the work that Tom and I presented today, uh, today and yesterday at this wonderful uh, conference, which is a group effort with Nancy Cass and other colleagues to uh, provide uh, an ethical underpinning for what we see as a very important change in healthcare globally towards what we are calling, and others have called, a learning healthcare system. Finally, we want to know what you think about the students, the seminar, and Flaxo students during this week we were teaching here. You are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, wonderful participants who are very well informed and very uh, insightful, and very uh, a pleasure to teach, right? Mm -hmm. Very animated, they listen, they are engaging, you can watch and you can see their, you're talking, they're thinking, they are eager to uh, exchange their ideas and thoughts with you. It's just a, a wonderful, from the standpoint of being a teacher, it's a wonderful environment. So thank you for the experience. <laughs> no, thanks for you for coming and pleasure. make us this session a pleasure. My pleasure as well. <laughs> All right. Thank you.